Yesterday, I watched the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer. And after watching the Spider-Man Far From Home trailer, I can honestly say that we are getting ready to enter the era of SJW MCU. And in this era of SJW MCU, we're getting ready to see some absolutely terrible films getting ready to head down the pipe. Now, this Spider-Man Far From Home is nothing like the amazing Spider-Man from the comics. And this is a major issue I have with Kevin Feige and your Bob Iger over at Disney and Marvel Studios because it seems like instead of staying true to the source material and staying true to the characters in Marvel Comics, they are starting to head down a road where Joel Schumacher went with the DC Batman franchise and creating their own version of the Marvel Universe, not paying any attention to the comic books or the canon of the comic books. Because the Spider-Man from the MCU is nothing like the Spider-Man from the comic books. We don't see any of the elements of Peter Parker's life from the comic books, and we don't see anything as related to Peter Parker's story from the comic books. And this is something that I find to be quite troubling because without the elements of Peter Parker's story from the comic books, things like J. Jonah Jameson, The Daily Bugle, and the white male Flash Thompson, and his compatriots like Harry Osborn, we don't get Peter Parker's story presented on screen in the way that your Sam Raimi did back in 2002 when he created a Spider-Man adaptation that stayed true to the letter of the Marvel Comics and true to the spirit of Marvel Comics that were created by Stan Lee and Steve Ditko. When you look at Sam Raimi's Spider-Man, it looks just like a comic book come to life that captured the spirit of Stan Lee and Steve, Steve Ditko's stories. But when I take a critical look at your Spider-Man Far From Home, all I see is a Disney teen sitcom made with Spider-Man's face on it. And because it's more like a Disney teen sitcom, or as I like to call it, Agent Peter Parker in the vein of your Agent Cody Banks, that's where I have real serious problems with this Spider-Man Far From Home because it's clear to me that the material deviates so far from the source material that we're not getting a Spider-Man story. And this is one of the things that made me so angry when I was watching Spider-Man Homecoming was the fact that they deviated so far from the source material and instead of giving us a real Spider-Man movie, we are getting this disney Hannah Montana, Agent Cody Banks knockoff, and that's just not what people wanted to see when they want to see a Spider-Man movie. And what's really troubling is this film further compounds the terrible writing of Avengers Endgame, a movie that decided to use time travel to get out of a corner the writers painted themselves in when Thanos did the snap, and then used that, that corner that they painted in with time travel to get out of, and started using plot devices instead of giving us an organic story where elements that came from the story lead to the conclusion of the story. And it seems like your Spider-Man Far From Home continues on that road of not only deviating from the source material, but then further going into more bad plot devices because this story decides to tell us that Mysterio comes from an alternate universe and is setting up this so-called concept of the multiverse as some comic fans speculate. Now, if they're going to set up this multiverse, then I'd have to say your MCU is in serious trouble because it was clear to me that if you're going to use this as a gateway to bring in new characters like the X-Men and the Fantastic Four, it shows that there clearly is no vision for leadership as related to the Marvel Cinematic Universe 
because it's clear to me that it was very easy to bring in the X-Men and the Fantastic Four in the current Marvel Cinematic Universe, and you don't need to bring in plot devices like alternate timelines and alternate universes to bring in those characters like the X-Men or the Fantastic Four. And if you wanted to do this, you could have easily done this organically in the same way that Captain Marvel was brought into the Marvel Universe and really shoehorned into the Marvel Universe. You could have talked about flashbacks with the Fantastic Four to 2008 to show that Tony Stark wasn't the only guy who was a genius, that there were if you had Reed Richards running around, because if you had Spider-Man running around, you could have easily had Reed Richards running around, and you could have easily had Charles Xavier running around as well, going out and recruiting the members of his initial X-Men team. So it would have been easier to bring these characters into the universe in an organic fashion, but because your Kevin Feige, I believe, has a huge ego, he doesn't want to bring those characters in organically. He wants to come up with this big convoluted multiverse concept, and I believe that that's where your Marvel Cinematic Universe is going to run off the rails, because once you introduce concepts like this alternate universe and alternate timelines, this is where you wind up having the bad writing come in, and you wind up with writers using these plot devices to get themselves out of jams because these writers are lazy and they really don't want to take time to craft something very solid and consistent because oftentimes when a writer is lazy, what here they do is they go out here and they use a plot device like time travel or alternate timelines to get themselves out of a jam or they use things like past versions like they did with um, Gamora to get themselves out of a spot they got themselves into or they use things like alternate realities or they use deus ex machinas like the way they used Captain Marvel to get Iron Man out of space. All of these are signs of absolutely terrible writing and when I look at your Spider-Man Far From Home I see even more terrible writing from these Marvel Cinematic Universe screenwriters and they're not really taking the time to put in the craftsmanship that the screenwriters of 2008's Iron Man and Captain America the First Avenger did when they went out here and adapted the material because when they did those two films you could clearly see the spirit of the character on screen you could clearly see the heart of the character on screen and you could see the heart of the story and this is what I talk about about when people get too comfortable at a company and it clear to me that the people at the Marvel Studios have gotten too comfortable over the last 10 years because the sloppiness is showing up on screen and that sloppiness is leading to them making mistakes that they don't need to make and making stories that are really uneven and inconsistent and not really even tying stuff together. Because when I look at your Endgame clips online, I look at the story and I said the Hulk was just marginalized in his own story, Thor was completely emasculated, and the whole story really did not come together in a complete and organic fashion where we had satisfactory conclusions to everyone's story. Because in a well-crafted story, you would have gotten all of the loose ends tied up, you would have gotten all the characters completely developed, and there would have been a satisfying conclusion that would have led to them making a classic instead of an incredibly mediocre three-hour film. Now, seems like I'm ranting about Avengers Endgame, but that was a terrible film. And it looks like Agent Peter Parker, or should I say Cody Banks, um, is going to be absolutely terrible too. Because when I look at your Agent Peter Parker, and I mean, I don't see Spider-Man. I don't see Peter Parker who comes from New York and is taking on his villains in New York. I see the Disney Corporation deviating from the source material in the same way that Joel Schumacher used to deviate from the source material in Batman Forever and Batman and Robin. And what's really sad is most comic fans, they will sit there and tolerate what 
your Kevin Feige and what Marvel Studios is doing because it has a red and white Marvel label. But if this were a DC film and it deviated from the source material, many of these same comic fans would be calling out an outcry saying that this is one of the worst films ever made. And that's what's the really sad thing about it is that there is no outcry regarding this complete deviation from the source material and that everybody seems to give it a pass because they are so emotionally attached to the characters that they can't see the butcher job that they're doing to their stories. And if this Spider-Man Far From Home is a direction for the MCU, I see it as a troubling direction because, again, it shows that we have a lot of bad writing, a lot of lazy writing writers, and we also have a direction where we're going completely off the rails as related to the source material and going completely off the rails in terms of characterization. And this is where I see big problems coming for your MCU because instead of us getting the real MCU that comes straight from the comics, it looks like we're headed towards the road of SJW MCU, a place where identity politics and forced diversity and absolutely terrible storytelling are the social norm. And th if this is the case, this is the jumping off point for most moviegoers as I see it. But the jumping off point for me was Infinity War. And as I see it, this is going to be, as I see it, the end of your MCU. Because if it continues to go down this road, I see some seriously terrible movies coming down the pipe in the future. I'm looking to raise funds to publish my first comic book and graphic novel, so if you could donate a dollar to my Patreon, I would really appreciate it. And if you want to help me make more videos, you can donate to my Patreon as well, or you can donate via PayPal. And if you want to try some of my SJS Direct publications, like the ISIS series, the E-Steam series, the John Haynes series, and the Spinsterella trilogy, you may do so by clicking the link to Amazon.com. That's all I have to say for this video. You can comment, rate, and subscribe.